year, two-time uh, Final Four MVP. Uh, last year, she won the AAU Sullivan Award, which is given to the best um, athlete in the country um, in any sport. Um, Peyton Manning and Michael Phelps also have won that award, so she's in pretty elite company there. Um, and one of my favorite uh, is the facts about Catherine is that she's the only player to have medaled um, in both indoor and beach FIVB events. Um, and one of her goals is to become the first female athlete to medal um, in the Olympics in both indoor and beach, which I think she's on the right path to do that. Um, shout out to anyone who can name the only male athlete to have done that. Um, and she's played for Team USA, trained a lot with them, and won gold at the Pan American Cup last year. Um, and just recently graduated from Stanford University in three and a half years, which is definitely not easy, uh, so that she could go play pro overseas. Um, so she signed with uh, the club Monza in the Italian A1 League um, this past winter. Uh, that obviously got cut short, but she was playing in the best league um, in the world um, there internationally, so which is a big step up from college. Um, so if you guys weren't excited about Catherine before and from that awesome video that Nora and Lily made, hopefully that list shares um, what a true volleyball celebrity and icon she is at only 21 years old. Um, and she's very humble, so she won't share all of that. But um, I'll hand it over to John for the live Q&A. Welcome, Catherine. I'm so excited. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to answer questions and kind of open it up and talk about some gratitude and all that fun jazz this morning. So. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Catherine, I just wanted to get your take uh, before we open it up to, to Q&A. Um, just quickly, what's something that you're grateful for? We've had all of our athletes really kind of reflect on uh, how they're grateful for their family, the, our club, their abilities. The experiences that they've had. Just want to quickly ask you a self-esteem question for myself. Uh, what are you grateful for? I think I'm grateful for a lot of the same things. So I'm grateful that I'm with my family during this time. I'm grateful that I have resources that allow me to stay in shape and work out. Um, I'm grateful that I've had experiences to travel the world and be exposed to different cultures um, through volleyball and just through like my own travels. Um, but especially during this time, I'm like most grateful for kind of being able to take a step back and seeing that like, oh my gosh, without volleyball, like I can really see like, I love volleyball um, because I can't have it. And so like whenever something's taken away, like you kind of realize like, how much you love it or i mean i guess you can also realize that you don't love it um but hopefully in all of our cases it's the former um so for me i think like this time yes it's difficult we can't play but like i'm grateful that i that has shown me like oh my gosh how much i miss it um and so i think that's probably the biggest takeaway i get to spend time with my family and like i realize like how much i truly love the sport yeah, I think a lot of us are going through the same things. Um, I think one of our first AMP sessions, I asked our, our athletes uh, to describe something that they thought they would never miss. And a lot of them mentioned school. Uh, because school is definitely one of those things that you can have some animosity towards, but they started really uh, kind of understanding when, when things aren't uh, normal, how much you actually miss those things. Uh, thank you for answering. Uh, let's get into the, the Q&A section, all right? Um, our first question is going to be asked by Kendall. Kendall, would you mind unmuting yourself and feel free to ask your question? Uh, hi, um, I'm a really big fan. I just had to say that. Um, so my question is, do you have any pregame warm-ups or rituals that you always do? Yeah, I think... I mean, I, I can only speak to my experience, so I have, like, some pretty unique ones. But before every single game, college, club, I mean, I guess it started in college and then in professional, too. I always have to have a cup of coffee. Like, that's, like, a must. It just has to happen. Um, I also am really superstitious. So I had, in college, I had the same person braid my hair with the exact same hair tie every time. Um, I, before every match, I really like 
So in college, you scout your other teams, you watch video on them, and you have like a whole report about like what they do and like what you have to do to hopefully beat them. And so I usually spend like 30, 45 minutes before the game when we're sitting in the locker room to just go over that, talk about it with my teammates. Um, and I think that was super beneficial for me. And it kind of got me like in the headspace because usually when we were playing, we had school before, like right before. Um, and so then we would come to the gym and like be expected to kind of turn on the volleyball mode. And so I think like looking over the scouting report gets you kind of in that good frame of mind to be like, okay, I'm about to play a game. And I think for club, sorry, I'm going to go a little bit more for club. Cause you guys obviously aren't in, in college yet. Um, you guys can sort of start like scouting, I guess, like, cause you have like off, you, you guys like ref and you're off and then you play or whatever. So like, if you're off, maybe you spend like 10 minutes, 10 or 20 minutes before you start playing to watch the other team because um, you're going to have to play them eventually. And so I think that would be helpful for you guys. Great hint. I always do that. I'm sitting right by the sideline taking notes. And I yeah. think uh, coming from you, it's actually maybe a little bit more impactful. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to move to Margaret. Margaret, would you mind unmuting yourself and ask your question? Hi, um, thanks for coming today. My question was, who is your biggest inspiration? I, I think I have like two because I have like a volleyball one and then a non-volleyball one. So I'll start with the non-volleyball one. It's definitely my brother. Um, he's five years older than me and he's kind of how I started playing volleyball. Um, I, I started, he started his freshman year of high school and like I like wanted to like be the little sister that like did everything that he did. And so I went to every single practice and all of his tournaments and like I learned so much from him. Um, so I guess he's kind of like my volleyball one too, but uh, he's the best. I, I love him. But volleyball like that you guys would probably know would probably be Carrie or Misty um, just because it's incredible that they've won three gold medals, but they've also, they also went, so they've been to three gold Olympics where they won three gold medals. And then they both went to an Olympics before that. Um, and I think it's just awesome that they were able to have so much success over such a long period of time. Um, and that's something that I definitely want to do. So thanks. Awesome. Those, those are some uh, of my own role models as well. I remember watching them play. They came to New York and my whole club when I was in high school went out to go watch them and it was fantastic. Just to have that longevity is cool. All right, we'll move on to our next question. Morgan, would you mind asking Catherine your question? Hi, so excited to meet you. My question is, what do you think your college legacy will be? I don't necessarily know what it will be, but what I hope it will be will be that I came into the gym every day and worked really hard and made my teammates better. Um, and then created a culture at Stanford that allowed people coming in and people that were still there um, to continue with that culture. Because I think we built something super special at Stanford um, in my four years there. And I think if that continues to grow and develop and build, I think like Stanford will be a powerhouse until the end of time. But I mean, I think they will just because of the quality of people and the quality of players that they bring in. But I think with that culture aspect, it really creates like an, a force that like can't be reckoned with because I think like if you have you have the players and you have the people but then when you have like all of them on the same page and all of them working towards a common goal I think that's super powerful so I want my culture or my legacy to be someone that created a culture of coming in the gym every day and competing really hard so I hope that's what it will be <laughs> That's awesome. I think uh, a lot of our goal as a club is to build that understanding. Like you come into the gym, you compete every day and you can feel good about that culture that you're bringing out in your teammates and in yourself. Awesome answer. Uh, our next question is by Gabby. Gabby, would you mind unmuting yourself? And uh... Hi, I'm so excited to meet you. Um, my question is, what is the one piece of advice a coach taught you that has stuck with you all these years? I think the one that stuck with me for a really long period of time is one of my national team coaches when I was growing up. So like in like the youth national team and junior national team, um, he taught me 
it was about defense and honestly about like all of volleyball but he said if you don't go you won't know and so I think that kind of builds that mindset of like okay I'm gonna work my butt off to get to every ball um, whether that be on defense or like getting my feet to the ball when I'm attacking or as a setter getting your feet to the ball or whatever it may be like it can help with anybody but I think like in volleyball that has for sure helped me because it like gives you that extra drive to like okay I'm gonna like push a a couple inches further because like if I don't like who knows what could have happened and so I think that's super powerful for me just because like especially some days like in practice you you feel sluggish or you're like oh this is not working how I want it to and like there's like sometimes like not that full motivation there at least for me um but so I think like just having that in the back of my mind like if I don't go like I won't know what happens um and that's kind of like been always like my trigger like if I don't work my butt off like who knows what's going to happen and I think that's something that I've always lived by and like from I I got taught that probably when I was 13 um, and it's kind of lived on throughout my whole career. Awesome. That's a phrase that we actually use in our gym. And I think uh, if we can live by that creed, you'll really end up like going for it and you'll be surprising yourself. I'm sure there's a, an instance or two where you like touch the ball. You're like, holy crap. I didn't think I could do that. And <laughs> yeah, sure. the point was amazing. So uh, you see, even the, some of the best out there kind of still have that exploration with their skills. Uh, thank you. Uh, John, Louis. one John, one thing to add here. I want to make sure everyone heard there was one thing in there that I thought was really interesting that even at your level, like you have days that you feel sluggish and that you're like, oh, it's not working, you know? And I think that's really important to understand. Like everyone's obviously at different levels, but that, like, that's a feeling of frustration that you feel um, in practice sometimes. Like when you train as hard as you do, as often as you do. So I want to make sure everyone caught that awesome. yeah for sure for sure it, it happens to the best of us um, <laughs> for sure because like some days you're just like not performing well or things like you usually do that work just like don't work and you're like i don't know what i'm doing wrong and it's not working out but like if you just have that mindset of just going for every ball it's eventually gonna kind of turn the corner and work out for you cool i think we're uh we doing a great job segueing into our next question. Lily, would you mind uh, speaking up? Hi, Catherine. Thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor. Um, my question was about motivation. What kind of keeps you like motivated, especially we we're just talking about kind of when like you're in a rut or like you feel like you're not performing as you normally do like on a good day, I guess. Like what kind of keeps your confidence and like keeps you motivated and like training to be the best that you can? Yeah, like I said, there's definitely days where it's really hard to like, come into the gym and be like okay I gotta play volleyball right now because because everyone else like you have so many things going on in your life um and they only start to stock up even more as you get older but I think what keeps me motivated and like I think this was kind of the culture that we created at Stanford was like just being good for your teammates um that doesn't even have to be great and like you don't have to even be playing good volleyball um I think just like being a person that like your teammates can turn to, especially like, because if they're having a rut and then you want to be that teammate that they can turn to, but then the next day you might be having a rut and like you want them to also like come help you. And so I think that's a culture that can be not easily created, but definitely can like be worked on uh, because like, yeah, everyone's going to have crappy days, but if you can like all, you not even be motivated to like play well, but just be motivated to like be a teammate that people can rely on. I think that's super important. And eventually like if you like all these teammates are like kind of have a bond, like, okay, we're here for each other. The play is going to come um, and it's not already there. And so I think that's kind of what kept our team motivated because yeah, we were a super talented group of players, but I think once we kind of grasped the part, like, okay, we have to be there for each other full heartedly that's when the play got even better. Does that make sense? Thank you so much. Yeah, kind of like playing for your teammates, not playing for yourself. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that's something that will allow you to kind of unlock a lot of your potential and your motivation because this you even mentioned it, despite how well you're playing or how well you're not playing, uh, you can always support your teammates and find that motivation to kind of make your 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 team that much closer and there's nothing that can ever take that away from you. That's cool. Um, 
Kate, John, I'm going to jump in and say that, um, Kat, you mentioned that, um, you know, you guys were never really thinking about necessarily just playing well, but more so just like playing together and, and being good people and good teammates. Um, you guys are were definitely a really talented group of players, but not the only really talented group of players in the country. And if you guys are paying attention to those little details and you start to wonder why did that talented group win three national championships and the others didn't? Uh, well, those are the those are the little things that separate, and they're not so little at all. Actually, those are the big things that separate some of the really talented groups who are successful from the ones who aren't. So thanks for sharing that, Kat. That's big stuff. For sure. And I think that's like kind of the biggest takeaway that I took from college is that, yeah, like you can work and be a great volleyball player, but it takes even more work to like be a good person and a teammate. Like, yeah, I, I think everyone on my team was a good person, but I think like being a good teammate, like especially in times of like stress or like during the game, like where things aren't working out, I think that's super impactful because like, like I said, everyone's not going to have a great day and teams are going to have a better day than you most of the time. But like, if you can just like stick together during those tough times, I know it kind of sounds like cliche, but I think it's super important um, because sometimes like we didn't play better than a team that we beat, but it was like, we had talent. Yes. But I think like our team was a lot stronger and that took a lot of time to build. So. Awesome. I think uh, another takeaway is that last comment you mentioned, it doesn't happen right away. It takes some time to build. Um, and being invested in the work is something that really does uh, become fulfilling. And as you can see, some great results can happen, even if you don't have the most talented team. And sorry, I'm going to cut in one more time. Sure. I think, like, I don't want to get you guys confused as, like, you have to be, like, a good teammate. I think that's very different than like being your teammate's best friend because I'm not best friends with a lot of my teammates, but like we have like a common bond and like we have a common goal and we've like worked it out to where like I'm going to be a great teammate on the court and like during practice and in games, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to spend like all of my time after practice with you. Like, yeah, in some cases that's how it works out and that's great, but I don't think that there needs to like be a constant push to like be best friends with your teammates. Yeah, like be friends with them. Like some of my closest friends have come from volleyball and playing with them. But I think like understanding that there can be like a separate separation, but also a balance in that is really important too. Awesome, awesome. Let's uh, move to our next question with Caitlin. Caitlin, would you mind unmuting yourself and uh, asking your question? Hi, um, I hope all is well. I was wondering, how did you know you wanted to attend and play at Stanford? So I, my recruiting process was a lot different than most. Like I started in the seventh grade, and so it was like very fast and very early. But um, I think that the, yes, Stanford has a great academic is a great academic institution and like their athletic department is the best or one of the best in the country. So that's like a no brainer. Like, okay, that's awesome. And like, if I had that opportunity, I don't want to give it up, but that was also a lot of schools that I was looking at. And so I like wanted, I was trying to kind of keep my eyes open and see like what I really truly wanted. But when I stepped like onto campus and was with the team at Stanford, the thing that stuck out to me the most and like, that I experienced in my four years there was that I could truly, truly be myself um, because Stanford is a bunch of weird people, but like they're super unique and like they can, they do like what they want to do and they usually figure it out and like make that, like accomplish what they want to do. And I think that was a super special place to be because like it just like helped me work towards things that I wanted to do that I didn't necessarily think I could have. Um, and so I think like surrounding yourself with people that have a common goal or like have a like, similar mindset to you is really important. Um, and that's what truly brought me into Stanford. Like, yes, they were for sure like at the top of the list, but like I felt like I could be like uniquely myself and not have to like put up a facade for people that who I wasn't. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you so much. Of course. Awesome. Uh, let's move on to our next question. Kevin, would you mind unmuting yourself and uh, asking your question? 
Um, yeah, hi. It's so great to meet you. Um, I was just wondering, what's like your go-to method or ritual uh, to calm your nerves pregame or during the game? Yeah, so I think I touched on a little bit before, but like to like my go-to thing to just be ready for a game, especially when I'm nervous. Like I'm a very intellectual person, so like if you can give the more information I get, the better for me. I know that's not the case for everybody. But, like, if I'm looking at the scouting report and, like, talking it over with my teammates about, like, what I know is going to come at me in this certain rotation or, like, how is this person going to serve, like, that calms me down just because I know that I'm prepared. Um, and that that's, can look different for everybody. But for me, like, preparation and knowing I'm prepared is super important for me to calm nerves. Um, because, yeah, like, before every game I, I was nervous. Um, but I think, like, knowing, okay, I, I know everything that they're going to do is a good thing to have in your back of, in the back of your head like when you know that you're going to be nervous especially um and then one thing that I always did before games like when we were hitting in lineups or whatever like my teammates and I would dance and so I think like having fun with it um at least for me and my team like we always played better when we were laughing and having fun and so I think that's important too like finding that balance of okay I have the information and I'm like ready to play ball but at the same time like being able to kind of let loose. Does that make sense? I hope. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's something that we echo at, at Northeast. Just we want you guys to be prepared to execute your, your plays, execute your hits, and make sure that that, that information is tangible. It's, it's with you. But we also love to see, and I think the 18s team does this well, just have a blast. Just, like, go out there and have some fun with your – your teammates and, and be loud, be uh, boisterous. And it's, it's when volleyball is played that way, you can tell that there's just this energy and momentum. And I think that's what you're, you're getting out there, right? Yeah, for sure. Cool, cool. Uh, our next question, Ella, would you mind unmuting yourself and asking? Hi, um, I was just wondering how long have you played volleyball and when did you know it was a passion of yours? I've played volleyball since I was 10. So 11 years now, 11, 12 years. But I think I knew it was a passion when I gave up all the other sports. So I've played sports like my whole life. My parents both were college athletes. My dad was a professional athlete and my brother was the same. Like he played sports his whole life. Um, and so I think like I was playing club soccer, club volleyball and club basketball all at the same time. And my parents were like, okay, you have to choose one. And, like, I played soccer and basketball, like, like I said, like, for probably six, seven years. And, uh, I mean, not club at three, but that that would be insane. But um, so probably, like, five years playing club of basketball and soccer. And, like, when I decided, okay, I really like volleyball after going to clinics and um, understanding, like, what it was. And I gave up the other sports. Like, that's kind of when I knew it was a passion. Um, and then when I, like this might sound bad, but like when I started to sacrifice things that I normally didn't, I like was like, okay, I'm, I really want to be committed to this sport. And like, I think that I can be great at it if I put really hard work into it. Um, so like when I, I think those are my two answers. Like when I gave up other sports and then when I started sacrificing things that I didn't normally. So like when I gave up time with friends, I went to volleyball practice, but at the same time, my thought process was like I'm hanging out with other friends right now because I got volleyball um or like when I like, did school instead of hanging out because I knew I had volleyball and so I think that there's like a a balance that needs to be like figured out um and that was like my path but I don't know I think when I gave up volleyball when I gave up the other sports I was like okay this is kind of like my last bet and so I, I want to stick with it I think a, a lot of athletes go through that, especially sophomore and junior year, at least in our area, where they're like, do I want to spend as much time on this court as I do? And uh, it's great to hear even an athlete of your caliber kind of having those thoughts that, you know what, maybe I should dedicate more time or sacrifice other spheres of your life to kind of honor the sport that you've decided to play. Yeah, That's and I think like, you don't necessarily have to give up everything. So yeah. in high school, I was on like my high school draft team um and so like I kind of had like a little outlet um but like that didn't necessarily that didn't take away from volleyball like volleyball was always the first priority and so like, that's what I told my high school coach 
who happened to also be my teacher. But I was like, if there is a volleyball practice, like during this, like I will have to miss track practice. Like I can make it up, but like that's what it has to happen. Um, and like that, there's like no budging on that. So like that's kind of what I went with. Um, but I think like having another outlet is super important as well. So like for me, it was track or like doing things with my family or having friends outside of volleyball. But like you have to truly make a sacrifice if you like want to be great. Gotcha. Uh, our next question is from Nora. Nora, would you mind unmuting yourself? And Hi, thank you so much for coming. This is super helpful. Of course. So my question is, uh, you're often dubbed like as a leader of your team, but which one of your team teammates really surprised you with what they brought to the team? Yeah. Um, I was looking at these questions last night and trying to figure out this one because it was, it was definitely a tough one. So great question. But thank you. I think that like no one truly surprised me because they were at Stanford. And so like everything that they brought to the table, I was like, okay, like, I kind of expected this just because you're here. But one person that like, like I always knew that she was ready to play, even though she didn't get that much time to play. Her name is Caitlin Keefe. Um, she's a DS and she was in my class. And like everybody's on my, on my team is talented, obviously. But I think, like what she brought to the table was like honestly inspiring because like, like I said, she hardly played the most that she ever played was her senior year. When people like when, when I didn't play and when other people like weren't performing, she went in and like was a rock star. Uh, but like, even though she didn't play for three years, like you never would have known in practice. Like she worked her butt off. She was like the other side's libero made everyone else better. Um, and I think that's like, something that I've always really looked up to is like, like I was always playing, but like I wanted to be like Caitlin and like show that I was getting everything every single day in practice because like she was. And I think that just kind of, it like steamrolled our whole team in that, okay, if everyone's not gonna act like Kate, like there's gonna, there's a problem because like she's working her butt off and she's not getting a chance to play really. Uh, and so like, if we're not doing the same, then how is that fair to her? Um, and so I think that that's who she like inspired her whole team and created that culture of hard work. And I think that was really awesome. Thank you. That's really helpful. Yeah. Awesome. It just speaks to the fact that even if you're not uh, like the superstar, because we know in sports, it's very, very rare that you are that superstar. It's just percentages. You can still have that impact and really get people motivated and really step up that you uh, are a valuable part of a team. Uh, we actually have a question from Kat. She uh, she wanted uh, to mention one. So Kat. Oops. All right, I got a two part question for you. So I knowing how competitive you are uh, and your and how driven you are, I know that you're working on stuff right now. So I'm wondering what kind of technical aspects of your game that you're working on. Obviously, a little bit challenging to do right now. But what are the things that you're trying to improve from a technique standpoint? Um, and then secondly, um, how you manage like getting feedback from or criticism, you know, from coaches and different coaches like Team USA, you know, you, your college coach, you have your coach in Italy, um, and how you deal with that as a competitor. Yeah, so like you said, it's kind of tough to work on like very volleyball specific things, especially now. Um, so I, I'll speak on like what I was working on when I could play and like what I'll still be working on when I go back and then stuff that I was working on that when I'm working on now. And so when I like, can play and when I was playing, I was tr I was really working on this might get like super nitpicky because just like I there's things that like I'm really good at and things like I still want to get better at. So like I want to become a better passer, um, and that happens to like be do with my feet and my angles. Um, I just like need to like do you want me to go like in like in like, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so, like I. <laughs> I tend to like get my platform really close to my body when I'm passing. Um, so something that I worked on is like getting them, like having space in between my like, my tricep and my chest, just mm -hmm. so that there's space um, for when I can create my platform. That's what I'm working on in passing. Um, another thing that I'm working on is um, in blocking, like when I'm going to my left, getting my hips completely square and pressing over low and fast. Um, Cause when I don't do that, like I, I like swipe my block um, and you want to get over fast so those are two things that i was working on like in the gym pretty much every single day um 
And then something that I've been working on now is still fasting. It's just like in a different different way. So like I'm working on like getting my angle out early um, and creating space. So like my dad serves balls to me like in our street without a net, <laughs> like just like from the ground. Um, and it's honestly kind of hard because we're, I, mean, I think it's harder honestly because there's no net. So it's like coming at you way faster. Um, and so that's like one thing that you can work on. I mean, I know a lot of other, like a lot of your parents don't necessarily like, know how to play volleyball. And that's seriously still my case. My dad's not that great, but like he helps me out. Um, so that's one thing that you can be doing right now. I'm also doing like a lot of plyometric stuff. So like I use like the steps in my backyard, to, like do a jump program that was given to me. Um, so like I'm trying to make it work with what I've got, um, which I, I think it's definitely tough right now, but I think that like you can always find something. Um, I think I told you that like I built one of those like plywood um, like angled boards so that I can like hit on that, and then after I hit, it will bounce back, and I can pass and set myself. And then kind of keep a little rally going with myself, which is sad, but I mean I guess I'm, I'm making it work again. And then the second part of your question was how do I manage coaches' feedback, right? Yeah. Um, I think that. Like I, like I said, I'm a very intellectual person. So like the more info you can give me, like the better for me. Um, but I think like the thing that I've found that works best for me is like when I come to a coach and ask them a question before like I get feedback necessarily. Um, and that can be different for everybody. But like for me, I really like to ask questions and I like to have a reason why I'm doing something before I do it. Um, and so I think that was a, a really cool dynamic that me and my family for coaches had is like I can go to them and ask a question and like if they don't have a reason behind it I will like I'll I don't have a problem challenging them um and that might be an uncomfortable spot to be in but like if they don't have a reason for why I'm doing something then like th there hasn't been that much thought behind it um at least that's how I think of it and so like whenever someone gives me feedback I like to ask why and like if I know I'm working on it then I'm like all ears um and criticism is definitely hard but like what I've always been told and like what I try to remember is like if a coach isn't talking to you, there might be a problem. Um, and so like I like want all the feedback that I can get just because like I know that they're paying attention to what I ask them to look at. So like, for example, in college, I'd be like, Kevin, can you, Kevin's my coach. He'd be like, Kevin, can you watch my right foot when I block so I can see if I'm getting square or whatever it may be. And like those little things really help in the long run just because like yeah feedback sometimes always isn't fun just because like people are criticizing you or like giving you things that like you need to work on so it's like makes you vulnerable but i think being able to be vulnerable in those situations like will only make you better but thank you yeah well i love that i love the, the comment you made about taking initiative there like asking questions and making sure that you you're not just it's not just a one-way street there because i mean when you have that kind of that culture that you mentioned building in your gym that communication is present and i think that's one huge thing that we try to kind of advocate at northeast is that we want to have conversations with you about your game and about what you are feeling while playing your game so keep that in mind athletes uh we're gonna go into some questions that we had uh delivered in the chat um so katrina would you mind uh asking your question Hi, Catherine. Hi. Um, my question was, as a college athlete about to go into the real world, like, what is the best life skill you've learned that will help you succeed, like, in a job or, like, with friends in the future? Yeah, I think my answer would have to be that I learned how to make sacrifices for what I want. Um, so in college, like, I really wanted to like I wanted to play volleyball at a high level and I wanted to do well in school um, but obviously when college is over like you don't have school to do um, and a lot of us don't play volleyball after college and so I think like just understanding that there's going to be sacrifices that you're going to have to make in your real world life um, and kind of getting to a point where you can have like break it down um, that's what I did in college like I broke it down so like I was like okay I have practice here and I have to be in class from this time to this time. And then I can have to finish my homework. I can go see my friends. And there's like always this like kind of little planner going on in the back of my head. And so I think that's 
a really valuable skill is like learning how to sacrifice things that you want. So say in your real world life, like you want to work, like you have to go to work from nine to five, just an example. And then after that, like you want to play volleyball, like in a rec league or something, or, and then you, or you want to hang out with your friends after work. Um, so I think like figuring, just figuring out like times where you can sacrifice and times where you kind of have to push. That's something I for sure learned. Um, and I'm still learning cause like I'm still playing volleyball. And so like, my planner is similar to what it was in college. Um, but I think like there's different things that come along that you have to put into your planner or things that you like can take out. Um, and I think that's super valuable that I learned in school. Thank you, that was super helpful. Of course. All right, our next question I think is appropriate for what position this player plays. JY, would you mind unmuting yourself and asking uh, Catherine your question? Yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, thank you so much Hi. for talking with us today. Um, I am a libero, and I was just kind of wondering, as an outside hitter, um, what you appreciate the most about um, your libero, uh, Morgan Hens. Of course. Um, there's so much, so many things that I appreciated about her. Um, I think I'll go into passing first because her main roles were passing and de defense. Uh, passing, she like always took. I mean, I guess this is similar for defense too, but like we gave her a lot of court and so it made our job way easier. And so if we didn't pass, like she was pretty much taking our spot of the court unless it came like directly to us. Um, and she's like a very unique player that can do that. And a lot of people can't do that. Um, so I appreciated that. It's like we could get on our routes way faster um, just because she allowed us to kind of get out of the way. And then Similar to defense, like, she, if you see on TV, like, she literally took half of the court, especially on out-of-system balls. Like, our middle back, we would we did rotation defense, so, like, our middle back would go to the right and dig the line, and she would have from farther than middle to, like, the left sideline. That was hers. Like, we just gave it to her. Like, we never went to our left. Like, that was a no-no for Morgan. Like, we just never went to our left. Um, so I would say, like, she just took so much court and, like, made our job a lot easier. Um, another thing was that she was a really good out of system setter. And so she like kept us in tempo. Um, so like a lot of the times we did this probably like freshman through junior year, like we like had her bump set high balls to us. Like most out of systems are, but my end of my junior year and like senior year, she like ran a fast tempo to us when she was behind the 10 foot line, which I thought was really cool. Um, and other teams like weren't expecting that because Usually when the libero is setting after the setter digs, like it's higher and they have a lot of time. But when you can get a tempo, like you have way more chances to score as an outside hitter. Um, and then the last thing, like she was super fiery and like really held us to like a high standard. Um, so for me, like defense is not my defense and passing is not my are not my strong suits. Like I know that everybody knows that. Um, but like she like held everybody to a really high standard and especially me. Um, and I think like if you tell your teammates what you're trying to work on, like they'll hold you accountable. And she was a person that like really held everybody accountable. Um, but was like also a really good teammate at the same time. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, we have a few more questions. Uh, I want to throw this one to Matt, Coach Matt. Would you mind asking your question? Yeah. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to ask, obviously, you got to play for two amazing coaches. And I was just wondering what kind of some of the, if any, if there were kind of philosophical, cultural differences switching from kind of John Dunning freshman year into Kevin Hambly for the rest of your time there. So I don't necessarily think that there was any like philosophical changes, um, but there were definitely cultural changes. And I don't even know if I can like pinpoint it. It was just a feeling. But I think that when Kevin came in, um, he expected everybody to be a lot more vulnerable um, and like look to change things. So after my soft, after my freshman year, after we won, John retired like right when we got back to campus, like literally the, the day of. Um, and Kevin came in probably about a month later or so. It's a rough timeline. But, like, as soon as he came in, we're like, yeah, you guys won last year. 
and that's great but like things are going to change and i think that was hard for us because we're like we just won like why are we going to change what we just did like it worked um and i think that's something that everybody can like really stick in the back of their minds is like even though you have success in something like there's always going to be change that needs to be had um, and that was like a tough thing to grasp because we're like we just we just did this like really hard thing to do we won a national championship and now you're asking us to change everything and like that was tough and like we were stubborn to start with um but i think like when we grasped on to okay like if we change something we're probably going to get better and it's just going to like help our overall game like get better um and like when we saw it starting to happen in practices we're like oh like we we should like jump on this bandwagon because it's going to help us um so that was probably the one thing like we like learned to adapt to change way be- like a lot better um and then the second thing was like we learned how to be vulnerable and way better teammates like yeah my freshman year John was awesome and like we were great but I think we were very naive we were freshmen that like we were all starting my freshman year so there were four freshmen starting um and so like we kind of just like went with the flow and didn't really know what was happening I swear we were just like on energy most of the time like we didn't really understand what was happening but I think like after we had that experience we understood that like okay talent doesn't like do everything and like once our leader left my freshman year, like we had to step up to the plate and with leadership roles, like, yeah, you can like be a great player or like be a fiery personality that like leads people. But also like at the same time, if you want to lead people, you have to be vulnerable with yourself and with other people on your team. And that's something that I've really learned. Um, That's kind of what created our culture was like, we just became way better teammates. because we had to step up into different roles that we didn't necessarily have before. Thank you. That was a very long-winded yeah. answer. Great, great yeah. answer. <laughs> I, I love that uh, response with the idea that even if you're on top, you still want to improve. And I think that's a, a major takeaway from what you just mentioned. You just won a national championship and uh, your coach is challenging you guys to still transform yourselves, which is incredible to me. So I'm glad you had that experience. Uh, we have two more questions. Uh, Coach Garrett, step up, my man. John, appreciate you teeing me up for this one, buddy. Took you long enough. And um, also, Kat, uh, you kept mentioning that word being vulnerable. And uh, my question has a bit to do with that. But we we talk a lot at our club about growth mindset. Um, I know it's something that you guys talk about at, at Stanford as well. and. Um, you know, you've you've obviously had a ton of success from the time you were really young, like starting your recruiting process in the seventh grade, and you know you win a national championship your freshman year. I'm wondering what's been driving you to continue to get better and to continue to grow, even though you you've you've continued to accomplish so much uh, in your short time. That's a tough question, but I yeah. think that i mean for me and my team i think like we always wanted to like just like it sounds super cliche but like get better every single day and like we talked about like getting one percent better um and i think that comes with like like you said being vulnerable and i said that a lot but like one thing that we really worked on was like telling a teammate doesn't even have to be in like your same position but telling them what you're working on And then like having a dialogue during practice of like holding them accountable. So say, this is an example, like say I told Morgan that I wanted to work on dive, like sprawling to my right and like getting balls up in practice. And there was an opportunity to get a ball up in practice with. Like, yes, there's a bunch of different factors that like allowed me not to do that. But like Morgan would be on my butt and be like, okay, like, you said that you're going to do that and like what's what's happening like what why didn't it happen and like that's like a tough spot to be in because like you're literally forcing yourself to like be put on the spot but i think that that created an atmosphere in practice like where it was okay to fail but at the same time like kind of like jump starting onto the next play because when someone like addresses it and it's handled like it'll 
it just like kind of goes away because you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like I, I didn't do what I was going to say I was doing. Um, and like, I'll be at a next play. And so like that mindset and practice every day, like just started to help us get better every day. Like we wanted to. Um, and so like that kind of kept us going throughout the years. And I think that helped us a lot because we were able to like kind of look ourselves in the eyes and look, look at our teammates in the eyes and like have those uncomfortable conversations. But like we knew it was for the better. Um, and then another thing that we always talked about was after my freshman year, there were a lot of expectations put on us. Um, and like sometimes those expectations can be crippling because like people are wanting you to do one thing and like sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, and one thing that we talked about a lot was like kind of blocking out the noise and not trying to live up to those expectations because it will like haunt you. So for example, my sophomore year, excuse me, we didn't win my, we didn't win the championship. We lost in the semis. And like in that instance, we've talked about it for the last three years, but like we felt like we were trying to live up to the expectation and we made the moment way bigger than it had to be. Um, and we didn't just like focus that it was like a volleyball game and it was just like another day in the gym. Um, and so I think like just taking it in that mindset, like if you're playing a really big game or like you know that there's people watching you and like expecting you to do something, kind of flipping the switch and being like, okay, it's just another volleyball game or it's just another practice um, and like not making it way bigger than it has to be because there were moments in my four years like where we were playing a really good team and like that we've had a rivalry with since like the beginning of college volleyball and we were at their place with a huge crowd and like everything was kind of stacked against us but like if we just focused like okay this is just another volleyball match and like we worked on getting better the whole season before that I think that really helped us like throughout my whole four years. That's awesome it sounds like you had some really great teammates um, that helped you stay motivated and and push you and yeah, and I'm sure you did it for them as well. They'd say the same thing. And like I said in the beginning, like it took a lot of time to like get to that place. Like it didn't happen overnight. And we had to work on like getting into those uncomfortable spots. And sometimes like it was still like someone could tell you something and you're like, okay, like yeah, that hurt a little bit. And like you can tell them that like, you can have that conversation. Like I really like what you're saying to me. Like I like like the intent that you have behind it. But like how you said it or like the impact that it had like didn't see it right and so like there, those can be there can be those conversations as well like how to communicate what you want to say um that like goes into a whole different ballpark but like yeah i think like understanding how your teammates want to be talked to is also really critical are you going to share some of those hows with your teammates in italy i don't know that might be a tough one because they speak <laughs> another language so <laughs> a little harder for sure yeah Thanks, yeah of course all right. Uh, awesome question, Garrett. We're going to move into our last question, and this is uh, going to be delivered by Josh, our visualization coach. Uh, so, Josh, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Catherine, Josh here. Hey, I know I'm wearing a, a like BYU thing like here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually grew up in the Bay Area watching, oh, wow. uh, going to, to Stanford games. So, uh and john elway is my favorite athlete so ah. so ignore that for half a second oh and and i work with kevin's cousin steve actually okay. so um my question is you know you i i i've kind of been watching you and and you know i work with some players on the men's side uh, of of the usa team um and i saw your goal um about karch karai being you know the the first man to win both indoor and 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 outdoor gold i wanted to know with that goal of you being the first woman like what's your what do you think your greatest challenge or opportunity is right now uh to achieve that i think that my greatest challenge to achieve that is like myself I, I, it might sound weird but like I like know that I can do it and, it and like the timing I haven't figured out yet. Um, but I think like the greatest thing, like one, I don't know how long my body will last playing an elite volleyball. Um, and that's like why I chose indoor volleyball first. So like beach is a lot more forgiving. Um, so like that, my body, and then 
to like my mindset of like okay like can I do this for at least eight years and like figure it out and then like switch to a whole nother sport and try to figure that out um so that might that's like definitely an obstacle that I'd like thought long and hard about um just like trying to figure out kind of the path um because I think I can get there and like I know I can it's just like the path of how that happens is still a challenge cool awesome I love the 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 fact that you're challenging yourself with like a first a first yeah. in like humanity yeah. like uh that, that's sick it's um, big it's big it's, love it's it. huge it's huge um and an inspiration for our athletes to see that an athlete is still trying to like push boundaries uh something that we really want our our girls and our boys to do in our club on a daily basis um all right so we're going to shift gears i want to thank uh catherine for um answering all those questions so let's give a round of applause thank you uh and